Eleven players participate in a deadly game of mafia where the winner will take home a lot of money. Using only their wit and reasoning, the players will do their best to survive. The story takes place in Moscow in the year 2072. The Game Master officially launches the 57th season of the TV game show called Mafia. Before the game begins, he explains the rules to the participants. In this game, 11 people are sitting while facing each other in a high-tech room. Out of the 11, 9 of them will be civilians and 2 will be the Mafias. Just like in the classic Mafia game, at nightfall, the Mafias will choose someone to eliminate. Then, when the sun rises, the remaining players will decide and vote for whom they think are the Mafias. During the voting session, the person with the majority of the vote from the participants will be eliminated. Therefore, the winning condition for the civilians is to eliminate the two Mafias. On the other hand, the Mafias will need to pretend to be a civilian until the end of the game without getting eliminated to win. However, if in any case that one civilian and one Mafia are left for the last round, the Mafia will automatically take the victory. The grand prize of the game is 1 billion Russian rubles. But of course, there is always a twist. The people that are chosen to be eliminated will be really killed by the things they fear most. After explaining the rules, the participants are given the barcodes that will tell them if they're a civilian or a Mafia. When the game begins, the Game Master introduces the participants. First is Luca, an 85-year-old billionaire who built his investments out of gambling. For the same reason, he joined the Mafia to give the last gamble of his life. Luca has four spoiled grandchildren who are just waiting for him to die so they can get their inheritance. But Luca put in his will that if he were to die in the Mafia, his grandchildren would get nothing. Next is Eli, a 38-year-old engineer who's been diagnosed with incurable thyroid cancer. With a few months left to live, Eli is afraid that he will die without leaving his family enough money to support themselves. Because of this, he decided to join the Mafia game. His wife tried to talk him out of it, but he is determined to risk his life to bring a better life for his family. Then there are the two prisoners named Butcher and Ivan. Butcher is the typical tough guy who wants to seek revenge on the people who put him in prison. Unlike Butcher, Ivan is a teenager who claims that he was framed for a crime he did not commit. But instead of the money, the two are promised to be released from prison if they win. Moving on, we see a guy named Constantine, a clairvoyant who works as a consultant. Also, a ballerina named Marie decides to be part of the game. Then there goes Peter, Marie's diehard fan, who will do everything for her. The eighth participant is Walter, an ex-military officer. In addition, there's also a sophisticated woman named Laura. Another player is Kieran, who just signed up to prove to his friends that he has the guts to join the Mafia. And lastly, an orphan named Kate, who wants to know about her past. After the introduction, the game finally begins and all the players are trying to convince each other that they are civilians. Afterward, a 10-minute countdown appears above them. Within the given period, the Game Master orders the participants to eliminate one player who they think is a Mafia. As the timer begins, the family and friends nervously watch on their television, worrying about their loved ones on the game. Marie suggests that they should use their limited time wisely. She asks Constantine if he has an opinion, but the man decides to abstain for the first round. Due to this, Marie decides to take the initiative by telling the group that she thinks Kieran is one of the Mafias. Peter immediately seconds Marie's claim. Just then, Butcher remembers Marie as a ballerina he once saw on TV back in prison. He also remembers Peter's face and tells the group that the two of them are a couple. Hearing these claims, Marie starts to get emotional. As it turns out, Marie is a 24-year-old famous ballerina and Peter is her number one fan. Because of an accident during a rainy day, her legs got damaged. This caused her dancing career to fail. Wanting to get back her career, Marie decided to have an operation to have synthetic legs. However, the cost of the prosthesis and the operation itself is too high for her. Just then, she saw the advertisement for the Mafia game and took interest in it. As for Peter, he signed up for the game after knowing that Marie will join. Kieran, however, still doubts their relationship 
and asks if Peter really knows Marie outside of the game. Peter then confirms it, but he insists that the two of them are not working together. Marie gets upset and lashes out at Peter, saying that she's tired of him for always stalking her. With the claim of Marie and Peter teaming up to win, Marie gets nominated for elimination. As the participants start casting their votes, Peter convinces them to vote for him instead. However, the voting ends with Marie garnering six votes. This makes her panic and she insists that she's not a mafia. And this is proven to be true when the Game Master reveals that Marie is a civilian. Pitifully, she accepts her faith and wishes luck to everyone. At this time, she is locked in her seat and taken inside the orb that looms above the participants. Peter tries to get out of his seat to help Marie, but fails. Inside the orb, Marie dozes off. Later on, she finds herself in the woods during a stormy night. Because of the accident that happened to her, Marie formed a fear of rain and lightning. As she runs through the woods, the lightning keeps on chasing her. Unfortunately, she reaches the end of the cliff. Left with no other options, Marie jumps off the cliff, but the lightning hits her mid-air. As she dies in her nightmare, Marie's body also disintegrates inside the orb. After that, the game continues and the Game Master announces that the first nightfall will now commence. As a drone flies over the participants, the Mafias choose their first victim. Shortly after, the lights turn back on to indicate that another day has come. Just then, the Game Master declares that Butcher is the one that the Mafias just eliminated. Hearing this, Peter mocks Butcher and calls him a swine. When Butcher is being taken to the orb, he curses at everyone and swears to kill them all. But this does not phase the Game Master. Instead, he tells Butcher that he prepared a special death for him. Two weeks ago, Butcher underwent a psychological evaluation where he was asked about his greatest fear. According to him, he fears nothing and no one, not even death but he does not want to die like an idiot while being surrounded by idiots. After being taken to the orb, Butcher finds himself in a coliseum. When two opponents appear, the people around him start cheering. The two opponents start beating and thrashing Butcher, but it doesn't take long before he turns the tide of the battle. Seeing this, his co-prisoners start cheering for him. However, Butcher's opponents just keep on respawning yet he doesn't stop until they are gone for good. In the end, Butcher takes the win and screams victoriously. Unfortunately, just when everyone thinks he beats the game, he trips backward and impales himself in the neck. Going back to the room, the Game Master tells the group that it is time again for them to find out who the Mafias are. But to their surprise, the time limit they have will be reduced for each voting round. In this round, they only have 8 minutes to decide. Constantine begins the discussion by saying he knows who the Mafias are. According to him, he has mastered his clairvoyance ability at such a young age. People also call him the Black Messenger as he delivers the future during crises. It is also noted that his only fear is dying of old age. Continuing the discussion, Constantine declares that Peter is one of the Mafias. Hearing this, Peter argues that if he knows the truth, he should not have let Marie die but Constantine responds that he wants the money for himself, so he has no problem sacrificing other civilians for his goal. Because of this thinking, Peter accuses Constantine of being a mafia as well. The voting then begins with Peter and Constantine as the suspects. After the session, Constantine gathers three votes while Peter gets six. However, Peter is not worried at all because he wants to die and follow Marie in the afterlife. After the revelation that he is a civilian, he's taken inside the orb. Peter starts to dream of waking up in the ocean. Having a great fear of water, he tries to row his way back to the land, but a hole suddenly appears on the boat. When he tries to cover it, his hands get cut. To make matters worse, sharks start coming his way upon smelling his blood. Thinking quickly, Peter stabs one of the sharks with a broken paddle. This causes the other sharks to get attracted to its blood and feast on it. Seeing this, Peter takes the opportunity to swim away, but as he's nearing the land, the island disintegrates into the air and Peter dies in the sharp teeth of the sharks. Yet he dies with a smile upon seeing Marie moments before his death. Meanwhile, the Game Master gives the players another chance to pinpoint a mafia, 
before another nighttime comes. Having only six minutes to discuss, Walter begins the next round. At this time, he reveals to the group that Ivan killed two of his friends after they crashed into a wall because he was drunk driving. However, the fact is that it is not Ivan driving the car, but another guy friend of his. Luckily for him, Ivan was rescued by a woman, but his luck ran out after the parents of his friend pinned him for the crime to save their son. With two counts of murder, Ivan is afraid of dying in prison. Ivan insists that he's innocent and that he was just framed. Laura then scolds Walter for targeting Ivan. Ivan thanks the woman and realizes that he is familiar with her face but she quickly dismisses it. As time passes by, Walter tells everyone to just vote quickly. However, he is the one that gets voted out because of his attitude. Walter is a 45-year-old ex-military officer who joined the Mafia game to know if he deserves to live or not. After a failed mission that causes the death of the young recruits, Walter succumbs to depression. So he is here to let fate decide for his life. When taken inside the orb, he gets to relive the moment he lost his soldiers because this is the most terrifying thing in his life. There, he tries his best to warn his men and save them but fails. His nightmare ends with him accepting his death with full honor as the soldier he is. Going back to the group, Walter being a civilian means the two mafias are still on the run. Another nighttime falls upon the group. Shortly after, the mafias decide to eliminate Laura next. Laura, who looks sophisticated on the outside, turns out to be an alcoholic woman. Because of this vice, she lost her family and career. Despite wanting to end her life, Laura couldn't dare to do so. Until one night, she witnessed an accident. It turns out that Laura is the woman who saved Ivan's life back then. But his friend's parents forced her to testify against Ivan in court. With this revelation, the young man finally gets relieved that he's now proven innocent after all. Ivan then tells Laura that he forgives her for what happened. Hearing this, Laura accepts her death with open arms. Having a fear of heights, she died in a plane accident. The game continues and the game master gives the participants only four minutes to discuss and decide. With just the six of them remaining, every vote is starting to get crucial. But Constantine just casually tells the group that they should vote out Ivan. After saying that, he cryptically tells Kate to jump out of her fears, and when she sees a triangle light, she must go there to find the exit. Puzzled, Kate states that his prophecies confuse her. Kieran diverts the topic back to the game and says he doesn't trust Constantine. On the contrary, Eli says Constantine is more trustworthy than Ivan. He also points out that Kieran and Kate seem to be cooperating since the beginning. This is because the two of them always have the same vote every session. Constantine interrupts them and insists they should vote for Ivan right now. But Ivan tells the group that he feels that Eli is one of the mafias instead. With all the considerations laid out, the six participants start voting. Ivan gets three votes for Constantine, Luca, and Eli. Constantine, on the other hand, gets two from Kieran and Kate. And lastly, Ivan stands with his opinion and votes for Eli. Although Ivan has the highest number of votes, the Game Master points out that three is not the majority number of votes for six people. For one person to be eliminated in this round, he or she must receive four votes. Due to this, the voting session is repeated with only Ivan, Constantine, and Eli as the suspects. The three of them stick with their prior votes, but Luca changes his vote from Ivan to Constantine. The current standing now is Constantine with three votes, while Eli has one. To everyone's surprise, Constantine votes for himself to be eliminated and is revealed to be a mafia. Inside the orb, Constantine dies of old age, but while dying, he laughs at the game master, saying that he manages to cheat on him. As it turns out, dying of old age is not Constantine's greatest fear, but his greatest desire. However, this doesn't disturb the game master even just a little bit. Nighttime falls again, and this time, Ivan is the one who gets eliminated by the Mafia. Kate feels sorry for him, but Ivan says what's important is that his name gets cleared before he dies. It is an emotional moment when Ivan talks to his mom, who's watching the TV right now. After saying that he loves her, he is taken inside the orb where he finds himself back in the prison. There, Ivan imagines his mom on the seaside before he is shot to death. 
When the game continues, Luca points out that three out of the four of them should have a unanimous vote to eliminate someone. Just then, Eli tells Luca that Kieran and Kate must be a couple. In fact, Kieran got to know Kate outside of the bar shortly after he signed up for the game. Even if the two had just met, Kate became comfortable immediately with him already. Facing Luca's question, Kieran admits that he met Kate last night, but he doesn't expect that she will be one of the participants too. Hearing this, Luca realizes that either he or Eli will be the next one to be voted out. However, the time runs out and the four of them fail to cast their votes. Because of this, the game chooses a random player to be eliminated. And the unfortunate participant is Kate, who is a civilian. When she is about to be taken into the orb, Kieran manages to get out of his seat and holds on to hers. Inside, Kieran and Kate find themselves standing on a fragile glass. After waiting for the right moment, he runs to her and they jump together. The two land in a desert and see a triangle light coming from a rocky mountain. That is when they realize that this is what Constantine told Kate earlier. The jumping and the triangle light are part of Kate's fear. Remembering what Constantine said about the triangle light being the exit, Kieran and Kate make their way there. However, snakes, Kate's another fear, start chasing them. The two manage to outrun the snakes, but a big monster awaits them on the other side. As it turns out, this one is Kieran's fear. Not wanting to lose Kate, he orders her to hide while he goes to fight the monster. During their battle, Kieran discovers that the monster is afraid of the light. Just then, he sees a glass pendant in the shape of a triangle on the monster's neck. He manages to snatch it and uses it to reflect the light on the monster, killing it. Afterward, Kieran and Kate see a rock formation of a face where they can place the triangle pendant into an eye socket. After placing the pendant there, they see an establishment nearby. The two immediately go there, only to realize that it is the orphanage where Kate came from. There, she sees her mother handing her to another woman. In fact, aside from her many fears, Kate is most afraid of knowing why her parents left her. As she gets emotional, Kieran consoles her, saying that what she's currently seeing is not real. And he also promises her that they will find the answer to her question together. Just then, their surroundings disintegrate and they finally come face to face with the Game Master. It is revealed to the two that Constantine is not just a mafia, but an employee of the Game Master. Using Kieran and Kate, Constantine planned to destroy the game by showing the public how they could beat it. However, the Game Master points out that Constantine failed. Just then, he shows Kieran and Kate that they are still inside the orb. What they are seeing in front of them is another dream created by the Game Master, so he can talk to them. But he's not angry with them beating the game. Instead, he thanks them for giving a love story for the audience to enjoy. Due to this, the rating of the 57th season of Mafia game greatly rises. Therefore, he will let the two live, but he warns them not to do anything to destroy the game again. Meanwhile, back in the room, since the only players left are one civilian and one Mafia, the Mafia automatically wins. Eli, who turns out to be the last Mafia, goes home to his family. He now feels secure and comfortable that when he dies, his wife and two children will have enough money to start over. Ten months later, he passes away. On the other hand, Luca finally decides to disinherit his grandchildren. Instead, all his fortunes will go to the orphanage where Kate came from. Also, Ivan's mom receives flowers for random people every day in commemoration of her son. Kieran and Kate then visit Constantine's grave, thanking him for saving their life. Kate points out that although they were successful on that part, the Game Master is still not defeated. At this moment, Kieran tells her that the game is not yet over. The movie ends with Kieran signing up for another Mafia game. This movie feels like different writers pitched several stories, and the producer wrapped it up into one movie. The concept and execution of how people will die in the game are good, but the storyline itself feels messy and all over the place. Also, for a death game, the characters seem to have no sense of danger and are pretty chill about it. The ending sets up part two of this movie, which looks promising since the main character now has the motivation to beat the game. But Mafia the Survival Game really lacks a lot of punch as a film. 